Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to examine how the PlayStation Move copes with different light conditions. To do so, I'm using a demo version of the Move enabled iPad game, spoiling its augmented reality tech as a testing tool. Since the internal sensor of the move might disrupt the test by taking care of the tracking even when the sphere is not properly detected by the camera, I'm also using a handy functionality of the PlayStation Eye, which has its red LED turn on whenever the camera loses track of the sphere. This way we are sure the sphere is not being detected even if tracking appears to be fine on screen. Let's begin this test by checking out how the PlayStation Move behaves in a normally lit environment. The only light source here is the midday sunlight uh, coming from uh, a window. As you can see, the Move is perfectly detected whenever I move it, even on the bright spot here. Now let's add some diversity to the environment behind me. Here I open the door behind me to let some extra light in. Again, no issues with the uh, move detection. Here I am pointing a small flashlight towards the camera in an attempt to confuse the system. But still, the move sphere is the only object being detected. But that's a very low powered flashlight, to be honest, so let's add something more powerful to the mix. A relatively strong blue LED light is now pointing to the camera as well, and yet the move is being tracked normally. So let's see how it fares with an even stronger light source by adding a little spotlight. Now the camera has some issues detecting the move sphere when I cross the spotlight. Up to this point I have changed the light conditions of my room without recalibrating. So let's see what happens when I do so. To calibrate in most games you need to hold the move still pointed towards the camera or the screen and then hold the move button for a couple of seconds, which is what I just did here. Doesn't seem like much has changed, but looks like the glare produced by the spotlight has been reduced a bit. Despite that, the PS3 still has trouble detecting the sphere as it passes over the glare. Now comes the interesting part. Let's try to recalibrate, but this time we place the move sphere near the spotlight glare. See what happened? Basically, the PlayStation Eye light sensitivity was reduced in order to reduce the size of the glare itself. Of course, there are still issues when uh, moving the sphere on top of the glare, but at least the glare is smaller. But let's move on and try harder to confuse the system. This time I'm using an extremely powerful spotlight, so powerful indeed, I have to wear glasses, because as soon as I turn this on, a little and extremely hot sun will basically spawn in my room. Yeah, it's that hot in here now. Anyway, as I'm getting cooked inside the ball of fire, you can see the camera has stopped detecting the move completely, as it is totally blinded by the supernova behind me. So let's try to recalibrate and see what happens. Again, PlayStation Eye light sensitivity was reduced in an attempt to detect the PlayStation move. And it works, unless I move the sphere over the glare. Out of curiosity, let's see how much the PlayStation Eye light sensitivity was reduced by just turning off the spotlight. Total darkness. That's the lowest the PSI can go in terms of light sensitivity, I guess. Any lower than that, it would be unable to see the move sphere, which is now tracked perfectly, by the way. Recalibrating now brings the PlayStation Eye light sensitivity back to what it was at the beginning of this video. Up until now, we have tested the light conditions, which are uh, unlikely to be normal in anyone's games room or living rooms. 
So the issues we have noticed here are unlikely to affect your gaming experience, unless of course you play with a portable sun over your shoulder or a window without curtains behind you. If that's the case, you are doing it wrong to begin with, as you don't really want your HD TV to face a direct light source for the sake of avoiding reflections. So now let's finish this off by testing the move under a more plausible light condition. Let's see what happens when the room is completely engulfed by sunlight. Sadly my window is too small to recreate such an environment, so I will use the spotlight we have seen before as an artificial sun facing me, rather than the camera. Let's turn it on. As my sunglasses liquefy over my face, you can see the moon sphere is not being detected anymore. So let's recalibrate it under this new light condition to see if the PlayStation 3 can fix it. Again I point it towards the camera, hold the move button for a few seconds and voila! Light sensitivity is reduced and the magic wand is now accurately tracked by the camera. There is still a very minimal jitter going on from time to time but it's perfectly usable nevertheless. In this light condition this is nothing short of amazing actually. So, to sum it up, I'd say the move calibration copes effectively with light conditions that don't involve too much underexposure, like having a window behind you. Those of you using projectors shouldn't have any issue either, cause you probably have them located high above and behind you, in a place you will unlikely be able to reach when rising the move. This is assuming the projector glare is within the camera image frame to begin with. If it's not, the better. Alright, I need to take a shower now. Thanks for watching.